Welcome into NFL Daily here on Chat Sports. I am your host, Harrison Graham. Thanks to everybody who submitted their trade proposals to me on Twitter, at HGrahamNFL. If you want to submit more, you can do so. Go ahead and give me a follow. Let's start with Chase Cooper's trade idea. Yannick Ngakwe to the Eagles for a third and a sixth round pick. I don't think we've gotten this far down for the Jaguars, have we? Like, obviously, they may not get the first round pick plus more that they were looking for heading into the NFL draft. They didn't get the offer they liked uh, during this year's NFL draft, but they're not going to settle for a third and a sixth, are they? I don't think we're, that's quite enough here, uh, Chase. Obviously, he's crushed his own value by wanting, uh, by begging to be traded on social media when players uh, actively uh, go against the organization they're with. Their trade value gets crushed because obviously they want out. That is how these things work. Now, Ngakwe is one of the better uh, defensive ends in the NFL. That 12-sack season a couple of years ago, he hasn't quite hit that the past few seasons, but he is still very, very good. He's a young player, only four years into his career. I think he is worth quite a bit. I don't think a third and a sixth would quite get it done. Second and a fifth? That might change some things, but I think you're going to have to get a little bit more than that if you want to get Yannick Ngakwe from the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, guys, have you turned on notifications? If you haven't, it's the little bell right next to the subscribe button. So you got to subscribe first, then you turn on notifications. If you're watching on desktop, aka your laptop, computer, whatever it is, uh, you can find all of our videos up in your inbox near the top of your screen. If you're on mobile, it's at the bottom in your inbox. So go ahead, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a video here on Chat Sports. I told you where it is. Now go ahead and help us out. Only like 18 percent of you guys have notifications turned on you're probably missing all kinds of videos so make sure to hit that bell and check your inbox all right let's go to Yusuf's trade here a big Titans fan he's tweeted a few times at me Juju Smith Schuster to the Titans and a seventh round pick in return for Corey Davis a first round pick and a 2021 sixth round pick I like Juju Smith Schuster but Coming off a down season, I don't think you're going to have to give up a first if you want to go get him. Now, I'm not saying Pittsburgh's actively looking to move Smith-Schuster, but I don't think he's worth the first round pick. Good player, not great. He's certainly worth more than Corey Davis, but if you're flipping Corey Davis in the trade, I don't know if you quite have to give up a first round pick. I think Pittsburgh would take this in a heartbeat. You get a decent you know, type of receiver in Corey Davis, a number two, number three type. Uh, sure, he's a downgrade from Smith-Schuster, but to get a first round pick in return, that's pretty good for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So what do you guys think? Who wins this trade? Type T for Titans or type S for Steelers? I think the Steelers win this trade. Smith Schuster's really good. I don't know if he's worth a first round pick and Corey Davis in the end. I'm typing my S for Steelers. All right, Jacob Raleigh sent me in this trade proposal. Pretty simple. Ryan Kerrigan to the Ravens for um, a third round pick. I know my guy Tom Downey put together a video of trade uh, t top 10, what was it, 10 trade ideas that should happen. I think he had Ryan Kerrigan uh, uh, going somewhere, and it makes sense, right, to the Browns, right? Uh, and it makes sense because Montez Sweat, who they drafted last year, they drafted Chase Young this year. Kerrigan's very good, but he's starting to get a little bit older, into his early 30s now. Uh, clearly, the Redskins are going young, so if they can get a day two draft pick for him, I think that's proper value because he's been one of the more consistent pass rushers in the NFL quietly because the Redskins, quite frankly, have stunk in recent years, but he's been really good. Sure, you're not going to get that 13 sack Ryan Kerrigan anymore, probably not, but in the right system, seven or eight sacks as your number two pass rusher, I think that's very much a possibility for a contending team if they want to go get Kerrigan. Baltimore's intriguing. I like this idea. Uh, they already brought in Calais Campbell. You get Ryan Kerrigan to go with him and the rest of that pass rush. That is intriguing to me, and I think that third-round pick there, Jacob, that feels like proper value for Ryan Kerrigan. What's really good value is NFL jerseys that are on sale. Under 80 bucks, you can get a lot of the rookie ones. You can get the veterans as well. This Tom Brady Bucks one is a really good look. Go to chatsports.com slash jersey deal. It's chatsports.com slash jersey deal. Tons of brand new Nike jerseys for you guys for less than 80 bucks. These deals don't last forever, so I'll help you out by putting the link in the comments and into the description for you guys. So go ahead and click that link and shop today. Get yourself a new jersey for the 2020 season. All right, Connor's trade idea, another Leonard Fournette one here. Leonard Fournette to Philadelphia for a fifth-round pick. 
That might be about the range, uh, quite frankly, because Fournette's not a dynamic pass catcher, even though he did have, I think, 76 catches this past season. He's not explosive in the pass game, and quite frankly, he's not a guy that can take it 75 yards of the house anytime he touches the football. He's a four, five, six yards uh, at a time running back, very station-to-station -station type, which is valuable, but not nearly as valuable in 2020 as it would have been, say, in 2005. Uh, productive last year, was able to stay healthy for the Jets, that, that was an issue earlier on in his career. Only had the three touchdowns, though. Uh, but if you look at Philadelphia, it would be intriguing, right? Because Miles Sanders, I think he's a candidate to have a breakout season there. Much better pass catcher than uh, uh, than Fournette. So that would be an interesting one-two punch with Fournette and Sanders. Clearly, they could use another back. Clement, Boston, Scott, eh, not great. They've got Elijah Holyfield. They picked up Michael Warren, uh, the UDFA there. So they got a couple of rotation-type backs there. But Fournette and Sanders would be a fun one-two punch punch, especially if they want to give Carson Wentz some help because they don't have a great receiving core as of now. Now, Leonard Fournette's been linked to trade rumors for quite a while. Do you think he will get traded? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know down in the comments section. I don't think he gets dealt before the season. If someone gets hurt during the season, I think you could see a trade happen before the NFL trade deadline. Cody Brown put this trade idea together. He has a uh, safety swap here. The Vikings get Jamal Adams, while the Jets get Anthony Harris and a 2021 first-round pick. This is interesting because I would love to know what you guys think. Is the difference between Adams and Harris a first-round pick? Don't get me wrong. Jamal Adams is very good. Anthony Harris is a good player as well. I, I don't know if you'd have to give a, a first on top of Anthony Harris if you are the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe you would. Adams is younger. His upside is bigger. He's more of a turnover or, or a kind of a, a Swiss Army knife type of player. But Anthony Harris is really good. He had six interceptions last year for Minnesota. He can play both safety spots, whereas Adams really is probably more of just a strong safety. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Adams is probably the best safety in the NFL and could play free safety if you want to. That's just not maximizing his ability. Uh, what do you guys think? Who says no to this trade? Type V for Vikings, type J for Jets. I actually kind of think that the Vikings say no. I don't know if you need to give up a first-round pick on top of Anthony Harris to get Jamal Adams. Bleeding Greens trade, another Jets one here. A few Jets trades feature on today's show. Le'Veon Bell to the Chargers for a third and a sixth. Guys, it's not 2017. Le'Veon Bell is not getting you a third round pick plus an additional pick. That's too much value. Uh, clearly, after taking the year off and playing in a less uh, offensive-friendly uh, system, Le'Veon Bell wasn't the same guy. He looked slower. Granted, that Jets offensive line, it wasn't good at all last year, so that didn't help. But to think you're going to get a day two pick for Lev Bell, think again because his value is not there. And on top of all of that, what I just said, his contract's not very good. He has, what, three years and $39 million left? Not all of that is guaranteed, but $13 million per year for a guy who averaged just over three yards per carry last year. Not great. And the Chargers, you know, they kept Austin Eckler. You guys may laugh. I don't know that Bell is more valuable than Eckler at this point. Eckler was better last year. Look at the efficiency. He was a better pass catcher last year, had way more touchdowns. It's not like that Chargers offense was awesome either. Sure, it was better than the Jets. Phillip Rivers is better than Sam Darnold, but... The stats are what they are, guys. I, I don't know. I, I mean, sure, you uh, to pair Bell with Austin Eckler would be interesting, but I'm not sure Le'Veon Bell is the player he once was back a couple of years ago. Now I'm going to ask you guys the question. Who's the better running back right now? Not better career, not better two years ago, today. Type B for Le'Veon Bell, type E for Austin Eckler. It's a tough question. I might go with Austin Eckler here based on what I saw last year. I was not impressed on how Bell fit in that Jess offense at all. Here's Jake Fox's trade, uh, Bears and offensive linemen. I've been saying this for uh, three months on our Bears-only YouTube channel that I'm in charge of. Feel free to give us a sub over there. Quentin Nelson to the Bears for a 2021 first and a 2021 third. This might be the best compensation trade I've gotten on today's show. That makes sense, right, Tom? Best guard in the NFL for a first and a third, Quentin Nelson. I don't think the Colts will do it. Colts will still say no, but... That's a reasonable offer from a reasonable fan right there, Jake. So I can appreciate that. And look, it makes sense, right? If you're the Bears, they need guards bad. They need offensive linemen in general really bad. Here's the problem, though. Quentin Nelson, two years into the league, two-time first-team All-Pro. 
<laughs> like, he is arguably not just the best guard in the NFL. He might be the best pound-for-pound -pound offensive lineman in the NFL right now, and he's only 24 years old. He's one of the most valuable assets in the NFL, so it would take a lot for the Colts to move on from him. You're probably talking about two first-round picks at least, which is very rare for an offensive lineman, but that's what you're talking about when you're talking about Quentin Nelson. The Bears would jump on this in a heartbeat, and it would make their offense a whole lot better, but obviously the Colts, you bring in Phillip Rivers, you're committed to winning now and maybe next year as well in this short-term window. And trading Quentin Nelson does not help you do that.